Like imagine if you could go back to your teenage years and skip the braces and the bad haircuts. Why not skip the awkward YouTube years? Hey friends. Welcome to my third and hopefully final attempt at filming this video. My regular viewers have been asking me for this video for a very long time. Like I said, I've tried to film this twice now and somehow I always leave out huge chunks of information that I feel are hugely important. So today I am prepared. I have my laptop here with an entire outline of what I'm wanting to say. So as you can tell by the title, today we are talking about how to start your YouTube channel. But really this video is gonna be a lot more in depth than just how to start your YouTube channel. I'm talking about everything, how to start, how to grow, all of my secrets, how to grow your subscriber count. I'm just gonna try and cover as much information as I can, spend 20 minutes making you think I'm gonna help you, and then at the very end of the video, I'm gonna tell you to buy my ebook where I give you the actual information. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm literally, I'm gonna tell you everything I know right now. Uh, as a disclaimer, I just wanna say I am um, not under any sort of illusion that I have some wildly successful YouTube channel. My channel is actually pretty small compared to some people that you would maybe wanna hear from. But I think what makes my perspective unique is that I kind of know why my channel is not where it should be and I'm gonna share that with you also. Like basically tell you what I've done wrong and what I still do wrong. But I've also been able to turn this into a career to where I make enough income to where I was able to quit my day job as a hairstylist nine months ago so I don't know I just I think what I have to say will be of value to you so let's get started okay the first thing on my list here is to address a question that might be on some of your minds which is is it too late for me to start my YouTube channel is it pointless am I just not gonna be successful yada 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 I wondered the exact same thing and the answer is no it is not too late but it is late enough to where it's going to be a little bit more difficult for you. It's going to take more effort. You know, people who started in like 2013 or before had a much easier time growing their accounts. They still had to work at it, don't get me wrong. But it seems like it was around that time where the algorithm started to change. It just became a little bit harder for creators to really make themselves stand out. Everybody and their mom has a YouTube channel now. It's just not as easy as it was back then. However, it's never too late. The entertainment industry is one of those industries where there just truly is room for everybody who wants to do it. There's an audience for every single person out there. Even if you wanna sit there, turn on your camera and just stare at your camera lens without speaking, there's an audience for that. So no, it is not too late. Get that out of your head. You just gotta work hard. Okay, let's get into my first actual tip. Now this is a tip that I have never heard anybody else give. It's kind of the opposite of what a lot of other people who make these videos say, but I just have to agree with myself on this one. <laughs> Every time I watch videos like this, people say, you don't need a fancy setup, start with your phone or start with your webcam or whatever. I hear that in every single one of these videos. And to an extent it's true, but keep in mind what I said a second ago, things are a little bit harder now. And if you want to be at an advantage, if you want to be ahead of the curve and grow faster, a huge tip I have would be to right off the bat, I'm talking your first video, be as professional as you can be. It's probably not going to happen with your personality. Like if you're not used to talking to a camera and filming and all that, you're, it's going to be a little uncomfortable at first, but your setup and the way things look and the way things sound, there's no reason really in 2020 why you should have poor quality in a video. Think about what you like to watch. Let's say you have a beauty channel, okay? Think about the YouTubers that you watch. Are their videos echoey and loud? You know, are they doing makeup tutorials with shadows all over their face? Like, is their background derpy and ugly? Probably not. So if you don't wanna watch videos like that, then why would anybody wanna watch your video if it was like that? So while I agree that you can film on your phone, especially now that phones make amazing quality video, I think it's hugely important that you make some sort of investment into your audio and into your lighting. All of my equipment will be linked in the description box and everything that I use other than my mic I have been using since I started in 2016. So my Canon Rebel T6i, my two cheap softbox lights from Amazon. In fact, I'll take a video of them right now. Here they are. There's my camera and here's the two lights I film with. I used to have a ring light that was right there behind the camera and I got rid of it. I use it to light my background now sometimes. I just felt like it was too harsh on my face. And then this right here is my mic. It's the Rode VideoMic Pro. And I also got the little tripod that it comes with because you have to have it close to your mouth. So uh, that's my current setup. I obviously have like plans to upgrade things and you know improve things and get new stuff as time goes on. This stuff's working for me right now and has, I just don't see a reason to go through like the awkward <laughs> 
phase, you know? Like imagine if you could go back to your teenage years and skip the braces and the bad haircuts. You'd skip that if you could, right? <laughs> Why not skip the awkward YouTube years? Like just get your setup good before you hit record. It's gonna give a good first impression. It's gonna make people feel like, okay, this person knows what they're doing. This person is legit. I can subscribe and get good content. It's gonna make you feel more confident. It's gonna make you feel more professional. There's certain aspects of quality that you just can't sacrifice if you wanna you know, grow your channel. All right, my next tip is pretty simple, but it's very important, and that is cross-posting. I actually don't even know if that's the right word, <laughs> but basically what I'm saying is if you have a YouTube channel and you make a YouTube video, you need to share that video on all of your other social media platforms and make sure you're sharing the actual link because in my experience, people will click one time. They're not gonna search for your YouTube channel. They will click one, maybe two times if they're really curious. So if you're sharing your video on Facebook, check out my new video, link. If you're sharing it on Twitter, check out my video, link. If you're sharing it on Instagram, check out my video, link is in my bio. You have to share your video on every single one of your other social media platforms. I recommend not only having a personal Facebook page with like your friends and family, but a business Facebook page. That is huge. And Facebook is a huge reason my channel is where it is today and is a huge reason I was able to quit my job, um, which we will get into later. And what I like to do on Facebook and Twitter is upload my thumbnail first like from my camera roll and then add the link it's a little bit more eye-catching you can see the whole thumbnail that way as opposed to if you just share the link Facebook and Twitter will create their own thumbnail for you and it's kind of it's just not as eye-catching that is so important YouTube doesn't really do an amazing job with promoting smaller channels especially before you even have any subscribers like your video isn't gonna show up in a lot of people's feeds so it's so important to use the rest of the internet to get your video out there literally ask your friends and family hey will you view my video will you give me some feedback and just don't get discouraged in the beginning by your view count i feel like every single youtuber has gone through the phase where they get like less than 50 views per video <laughs> that's just the way it is okay the next thing is gonna be kind of obvious but i feel like we have to talk about it because it's something that didn't fully click in my mind until a little bit later if you want a youtube channel as a career what you actually need are views views are how you get paid first of all i literally get paid per view both on facebook and on youtube and views are what drives subscribers think about it why have you subscribed to the people that you watch it's because you viewed them <laughs> and you were like hey i like this i want more subscribe so videos bring views which brings subscribers. So if you really think about that, what you really need and what grows a YouTube channel are videos that do well, are good videos. And I know that that sounds so frustrating because you're like, I can't just make a good video, you know? I can't just be creative. I totally understand that. 80% of the videos on my channel are just normal videos, you know, that I enjoy doing, but they're not necessarily unique and bringing me tons of traffic and tons of subscribers. But the few videos that I have created that are good and unique are the ones that have grown my channel. For example, I struggled hard for a year and a half. I was at 1,200 subscribers. After a year and a half of consistently posting, consistently uploading, working my butt off I could not grow my beauty channel and all of a sudden I had a funny idea I did the tiny hands makeup challenge posted it to Facebook it got about 14 million views on the original post it got me up to about 8,000 subscribers on YouTube which if you look at the percentage of that 8,000 people subscribed after 14 million people seeing the video that percentage is very very low but I would not have had those subscribers otherwise that video was the first big boost I got got to my channel and it was because the video was different and unique and funny and it did well it got a lot of views therefore a lot of people saw me and therefore I got more subscribers it's just kind of a simple equation the more views you get the more people that see your content the more loyal viewers you will you will get which is what you need to have a successful career on YouTube so anything any idea that you have even if it seems a little weird try and put your mind to it try and make things unique not every video has to be this massively creative slapstick like outrageous video but it is very important to at least have videos like that on your mind at least have them as a goal because they're just so 
massively helpful. Another person I'm thinking of right now is Vianne Strick. I've talked about her a couple times on my channel. I've collaborated with her before. The reason I want to mention her is because I remember finding her channel um, and she was at 10,000 subscribers and I had been doing YouTube like a year longer than she had and I was only at 1,000. And I was like, oh my gosh, how did she do that? I've been trying so hard, you know? And I looked at her channel and she had this video that she did that did really, really well. She was really new. She was really new as a beauty YouTuber, but she got a video to do well because it was different. Not a lot of people had seen what this type of video she did at the time. She had a great thumbnail. It was eye-catching. And if you look at your YouTube dashboard, YouTube is cool because it actually shows you how many subscribers you get or lose from each video. And obviously the videos with the most views get you the most subscribers and to get a lot of views you have to be creative and think outside the box a little bit all right the next tip i have for you is also going to be kind of obvious but it's very very important to have good videos that do well and to keep people coming back and wanting to watch you over somebody else the editing is so important you really have to find your style of editing it'll take time to kind of find your style of editing but what you can do in the very very beginning is edit your videos to where they are brief precise and to the point i I cannot tell you how many like new channels I've tried to watch and I can't watch them because there's 30 second clips of silence where they're like, today we're gonna talk about this foundation. Um. So even three seconds to me is like too long <laughs> for silence. Unless you're doing something, like if you're actively, you know, blending or building or whatever, you know, your YouTube channel is. If you're actively doing something, that's different. But oh my gosh, please edit out the awkward silences, even the short ones. The first thing I do when I import my footage into iMovie is cut out any areas where I don't see sound waves. When people get to know you, they will be a little bit more forgiving, you know, and they might stick around through boring videos because they know you and they know you're gonna entertain them eventually. But in the beginning, before you have established any sort of like loyalty or relationship with your viewers, everything has to be brief, precise, and to the point. And again, this goes back to what I said in the beginning. Think about what you want to watch. Think about how short humans' attention spans are, especially in today's day and age where everything is instantaneous and instant gratification. Don't drag out your videos, please. Uh, the next tip on my list is to always be upgrading and improving, not necessarily with your equipment, unless your equipment is, you know, bad. But I don't feel like you have to like constantly be spending a ton of money on new cameras and stuff. The two most expensive upgrades I've done are to a new lens and a new mic. But when I say upgrade, I mean like your background, change up your background. Change up, you know, if you do the same exact style of thumbnail forever, change it. There was a girl I really loved watching, but for some reason, I didn't didn't want to see her film in the same room in front of her staircase for four years. Like my brain just <laughs> moves on, you know what I mean? So your audience is growing, so you need to be growing too. Please don't be complacent. And that's a, that's a piece of advice that I really have to like give myself and remind myself of because I can tend to be complacent and comfortable and like get stuck doing the same things. Like when I used to film with backdrops, I would just like use a sheet behind me. It was such a hassle to change out this sheet and get it all pulled tight and steam it that I just didn't feel like doing it. And I would film like six videos with the same backdrop. And people just wanna see a little bit of change, a little bit of effort, that sort of thing. Okay, so I have one more tip on what to do and then we're gonna get into what not to do, which is also really important. My last do, and this is actually the biggest do, is to use Facebook to grow your YouTube channel. I fully intend on doing an entire video just on how to use Facebook to grow your YouTube channel, but for today, I'm gonna kinda try and condense it. Like I said before, Facebook is a huge reason. I have a, you know, moderately successful YouTube channel, and it is a huge, it's like 80% of the reason I was able to quit my day job, because I definitely make a very nice, modest living from YouTube ad revenue, but not quite to the point where I would have felt comfortable quitting doing hair and being like, okay, I can make more from social media than I am, you know, breaking my back, coloring people's hair all day, unless I had Facebook. The thing that makes Facebook so um, advantageous for creators is the culture. The way videos perform on Facebook makes so much sense. For those of you who are Facebook users, just think about it. What do you do on Facebook if you see a video that you find funny? You hit the share button, right? Like it's so easy. They have that share button right there and you just post it onto your own timeline and then all your friends see it. There's something about that share button and the fact that the videos autoplay that just get you 
triple, quadruple, quintuple. I don't know the word, but you get way more views on Facebook. So similar to YouTube, Facebook has requirements that your page has to meet before you can monetize your content, like before you can run ads on your videos. But it's still so important because of the views. So for example, Tiny Hands. When Tiny Hands went viral in 2018, I had 700 likes on my Facebook page. I did it totally wrong. I had my sister upload the actual file from her phone to Facebook. I don't know why I did that. I think I was like getting sick of myself. I was embarrassed that I was always promoting my my videos on Facebook and they weren't really getting views so I asked her to share it to like play it so I could play it cool you know it was stupid I shouldn't have done it but the point is um, had I known it was gonna go crazy viral I wouldn't have done that so the morning after I posted the tiny hands video I posted it on a Friday night and I woke up Saturday morning very early to do a wedding and it was at 86,000 views and I was like oh my gosh that was the most views I had ever gotten on anything I got in my car I drove to downtown st. Louis to do the wedding by the time I got up into the hotel room it was at 134,000 I noticed it was kind of gaining traction so I text my sister because she was the one who had posted my video and I was like hey can you edit the description like edit the caption basically of that video and link my YouTube channel and link my Instagram and like link my other accounts so that I can get some traffic. And thankfully she did that in time so that by the time it got like 14 million views, 10,000 or so of those people were actually clicking the links that she put in the caption and going over to my channel. It was hugely helpful, but it could have been even better had I done things correctly and posted it from my own business Facebook page to begin with. You know, people wouldn't have had to click as much to get to my channel. I would have gotten a lot more likes or followings to my Facebook page because people wouldn't have had to like click to find me. Um, I would have been able to monetize the video. Like there were a lot of things I did wrong, but yet it still helped my channel so much. Like if I hadn't posted that video to Facebook, I would not be where I am today. So fast forward a year later, April, 2019, I posted the If Beauty YouTubers Existed in 1999. This time I knew better. <laughs> I knew to upload the file directly from my own Facebook page. I knew to link my channel and everything right away from the beginning. I definitely didn't know it was going to do that well, but when it did, I was so thankful that I had everything ready. The only thing I didn't get as much of that I should have gotten was money because my Facebook page didn't meet the requirements for monetization until 48 hours after the video was posted, which is again, a whole nother ball game. But long story long, I posted that exact same video to YouTube and to Facebook at the exact same time. Facebook got 56 million views. YouTube got, I think, 1 million. So as you can see, there is a major difference in view count with Facebook. And as a result of that view count, there's a major difference in your overall career on social media. Believe me, there are major frustrations with using Facebook, like that could make you go out of your mind with being annoyed. But when all is said and done, I have made the most money from Facebook. I have the most followers on Facebook. I hate that word, but that's my biggest account is Facebook. And it's an amazing tool to grow your YouTube channel. There are a lot of creators out there who I love and love watching that are Facebook first creators. Like they have YouTube channels, but they're nowhere near as like lucrative and as uh, active as Facebook. Um, an example of someone like that is Trey Kennedy. Do you guys watch him? He's a great creator. He's hilarious. I love his comedy. He is a Facebook first creator. Like he gets millions of views from Facebook, one to 300,000 views on YouTube. So create a Facebook page for your brand, whatever the name of your YouTube channel is, do the same thing on Facebook. Invite your friends and family to like your page. Share your own videos from your business Facebook to your personal Facebook. Don't sleep on Facebook. Okay, so now I wanna kinda just touch really briefly on a few reasons as to why I think my channel is not doing as well as it probably could be doing. I think for a while, I really thought it was me. I, I was just like, you know, I'm just not everyone's cup of tea. I don't have the same look as other beauty gurus. You know, I'm this, I'm that, and blah, blah. But really, it's actually not me. It's not personal because like I said in the beginning of this video, there's an audience for everybody. And I get comments every single day from people who are like, whoa, I totally would have thought you had 3 million subscribers. Like, why is your subscriber count so low? Like my manager, that was one of the first things he said to me is like, man, if you look at like the feedback on your videos in comparison to people who subscribe to your channel, it's really low. I think it comes down to 
a couple things. I am really, really lazy when it comes to like anything that I feel like is an assignment or anything that reminds me of homework, any sort of studying. I can't, I, I'm not willing. I'm just not willing. I just, I have absolutely no desire or motivation to sit there and look at my analytics and research and be like, okay, what time of day is best to post? And this demographic of people is viewing my video at this time of day. And all the analytics part of it, like if you're a scholarly person, that's gonna be fun for you. I just, I can't, I just wanna post and not think about anything else. I'm not willing to do whatever it takes to grow my YouTube channel. I think that has definitely shown. But there are people, there was a girl I watched not too long ago who said her and her, the way she grew her YouTube channel was her and her mom literally sat there and did research about like posting times and what day of the week was best and what colors should be in her thumbnail and what keywords should be in the title and, and all that. It seems like that's a really good thing to do. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I can't because of who I am as a person. The last thing I want to encourage you not to do, this is just strictly my opinion and I am nobody, but I just want to encourage anybody who maybe will listen to me to not grow your YouTube channel by dragging other YouTubers. It'll get you a following like that, like simply just putting another YouTuber's name in your title and dragging them will grow you a following very easily. But if you want longevity, if you want your YouTube shelf life to not be over in a couple years, I encourage you to please try and grow your channel based on your gifts and your talents and what you have to offer. I know this is kind of a weird like Debbie Downer thing to put in this video, but I just, I've really noticed in the last few years how channels that basically they just exist to talk about other people have grown they grow crazy quickly but really at the end of the day like i cannot imagine how somebody doing that is going to retain their audience for years down the line if you have a bunch of 14 year olds watching you right now that are into that they're not going to still be watching you when they're 30 because most people eventually grow out of stuff like that and trust me that's not to say that i think there's anything wrong with commentary channels there's wonderful commentary channels that i watch for example tristan Parades, Parades, I don't know how to say his last name, but he's an amazing commentary channel and he doesn't drag people. I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about, you get me. I just wanna encourage anybody that I can to grow your channel with integrity. Don't social climb, you know, don't drag other people. Don't promote yourself on other people's videos. Oh my gosh, there's nothing worse than that. If someone comments on my channel and is like, great video, I have a channel too, please check it out. I instantly delete it. Like that is so rude, don't do it. No matter how desperate you are to grow your channel, it doesn't work. Don't expect nor rely on shout outs, especially if you are in the beauty realm. This video is really addressed to everybody, but just for one little second, I want to kind of focus in on beauty people. I always see on Twitter and Instagram people begging brands and stuff to like repost their work or complaining that brands don't repost their work. I understand wanting that, but shout outs don't really work the way they used to. Unless someone gives you a real genuine detailed shout out and includes like a clip of your content and includes your link in the description box. In 2020, shout outs don't really work. The first big shout out I ever got was being featured on Sigma's uh, Instagram stories and I got seven seven followers from it. So try not to focus on too many things like that. Focus on your content and what you're doing and the type of videos that you are making. Really don't worry about anyone else. Easier said than done, but just trust me, it, it's the only way to really grow and sustain your channel. All right, I just have some honorable mentions here. Remember to put a little bit of thought and effort into your thumbnails. I use Adobe Spark Post to create my thumbnails and I put like words on it. And sometimes I will use PicMonkey, you know, if I want two shots of my face, if I wanna do like a before and after or something, I will use PicMonkey, save it to my phone and then use Adobe Spark Post to add the text and all that. Thumbnails are important. They need to be eye catching and fun, you know? Your description box is important. Make sure you list every product Product that you use no matter what if you're a lifestyle blogger and you're showing a brand of chicken that you're cooking that night like link it in the description box down below it increases your views because if someone types in you know that brand of chicken <laughs> or types in that product your video might pop up so description boxes and titles and tags like YouTube gives you the option to tag your videos all of those things 
are important. So it looks like that's all the tips that I wrote down. One thing that just kind of popped into my head is don't feel um, embarrassed by what you're doing. I remember being really afraid for my friends and family, like people I knew in real life, to see my channel for the first time. Uh, that goes away. Now it's just normal. It's like, this is what I do for a living, you know? Try to push past that. Really try to be yourself. Don't just do what other people are doing. Oh, that reminds me of another don't. I don't recommend you grow your channel by doing a lot of giveaways. Giveaways are great. They're a fun way to give back, but they don't really get you loyal viewers. They get you people to subscribe because they want to win something from you. And ultimately, like, they're not subscribing because they really, really like your content. So just keep that in mind. The only way to really do this and really be successful at it is to just have organic, real views from real people who really like your content. Um, and also just a side note, uh, I wish someone had said this to me, don't feel guilty for wanting views. Don't feel guilty for wanting money. <laughs> this is an amazing job. You get to work for yourself. You get to set your own hours. It, it seems like no matter what your niche is, you get free like products sent to you to test out, which gives you more content. You get to make amazing relationships with your viewers and with other creators. You get to be creative. There are so many amazing benefits to this that I really want to encourage anybody who wants to do it not to feel guilty or embarrassed for wanting followers or wanting views because that's that's what you have to have to do this for a living, you know? I'm just empathizing with all of you watching this who are just starting because I remember comments getting to me and I remember people being annoyed or thinking it was weird or like accusing you, like I had a cousin I remember accusing me of wanting to be famous and it's like, you. <laughs> if you have a gift that you can earn an income from, please do it. This whole video is to encourage you. Again, there is an audience for everybody. And I just think getting paid to do something that you find fun just leads to a happier life. I think YouTube is a great thing and it's definitely something to be strived for if you are interested in it. So, I don't think I forgot anything this time. If I did, I will link it in the description box. And again, I'm going to make another video specifically about Facebook, but let me know what else you would like to see. I'm an open book. I have no problem showing you like how the financial side of it works. You know, different ways you can make money in the beginning when you're really small and you don't have a lot of ad revenue coming from views. Just let me know what you guys want to know and what you want to see. I just don't know how much you want to know from me because I am like a smaller channel, but I'm willing to share whatever knowledge I have with you. So thank you friends for watching. I talk so much that my tongue is like, I want to scrape it off. I have to go over to Nikki's house. Oh my gosh, right now. It's 5.30. Oh my God. I've literally been filming all day. I love you and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Like I said, I've tried to film it a few times. Oh my God, I unbutton my pants here. <laughs> Hurting the fat roll. Ooh. Um, hello, okay, focus. Hello. Mm -hmm.